Hello friends, welcome to another oil painting tutorial. This time I'll be painting onions from a picture that I took myself quite a while ago and just got around to finally painting this beautiful composition. I faced a lot of challenges and faced a lot of my fears approaching this painting. So I'll be happy to talk about them in a little more detail as we go along. But um, just to start um, using gesso board 8x8 and I covered it with black acrylic paint and just let it dry a little bit before I started. I completed this painting over two days with a five day break giving my first layer of paint to dry a little bit and I'm gonna list all of the colors that I've used in the description but basically, as you're gonna see later on in this painting, I've used pretty much every red and purple and pink that I had in my collection because I wanted to create a lot of interest in this painting, even though this is a very limited palette um, considering all of the three objects in the compositions are the same, red onions, they have a lot of the cooler red and purples, a little bit of the pinks and warm reds in there, but I wanted to kind of go crazy with the colors if you want and to make sure that even though this is a very small still life, anywhere your eye goes, I wanted to have something to look at. I wanted to create interest with the texture and the color variation. So I'm usually starting with the midtones and you can see on this onion and I've added a little bit of the shadow so I have something to blend this midtones into. And I'm already creating variation between cooler and warmer midtones. I'm also laying down a bit of a warmer paint on the first layer so that can create a, this sense of a glow when I start going over on the next day. So for the warmer red I'm using my cadmium red. This is also one of the most opaque paints that I own and all of the cadmiums are pretty much um, opaque paints so I wanted to cover up the black backgrounds of my canvas to make sure that this red is definitely going to be um, showing through when I start going over it with different glazes on top of it and Working from a photograph definitely creates a limitation because a camera is not able to translate all of the colors that you see in person but for me it gives the freedom to work um, different times of day and work over different courses so I don't have to stress over completing my still life a la prima all in one day wet and wet I can experiment with textures when I let one layer dry up a little bit then go over with details and the glazes and the medium that I'm using for this painting is Galkit gel um, I wasn't using as much for the first layer because I wanted my paint to be rather thicker consistency so that I can put some pigment on the canvas and I was using more of the gel in my mixes when I was going over with the layers on the top. So for this um, onion that you can see me drawing right now, a cut one, I've used a very beautiful color Portland warm gray which has um, sort of a lilac undertone to it and I just mixed in a little bit of the titanium white into it and a little bit of the paints gray to tone it down but I was also using just the transparency of the paint to show some of the black of the canvas showing through and that helped me to create a little bit of the variation um, in this undertone and I wanted this onion to be the main focus point but I still wanted to 
going to make it look more natural so it's not popping up too much and this is already five days later when my first layer dried up I'm coming back with more details and I think the most challenging part of this whole composition was drawing these dried up little tails that I just found so hard to make sense of what was going on in them so I just went with basically looking at the shapes of my shadows and highlights and I've used um, some mixes of the yellow ochre and burnt sienna and a little bit of the Naples yellow I did not want to make them too saturated so that they not take attention away from the composition um, they're rather just shaping the composition and bringing your eye back into the painting because all of these tails are sort of going around in a circle so that your eye is not leaving the canvas. But um, I enjoyed it. It was a um, little bit challenging, but it was also fun at the same time. So with the next layer of paint, you can see me. I, I started creating these veins on this um, onion skin and as you can see I am not painting them in a one continuous line I just drag my brush over the onion trying to make rather the indications of these lines so they create texture at the same time and don't just look very stylized for the little bit of the highlight that I just added on the top onion I've used um, a mix of the paints gray and some of my reds so for the reds I mainly use as I mentioned cadmium red medium for the warm red I use quinacridone red for the cooler reds and I also used a mixes of the purple matter and quinacridone magenta and both of these colors are transparent and very nice to use in the mixes because they just tone them down just a little bit and they just change the opacity just a little bit so for the shadows I use these um, purple matter and quinacridone magenta in the mix with the paints gray and they created very beautiful cool shadows and for the highlights, I just added some Portland Warm Gray and Cadmium, um, I'm sorry, Titanium White. Another beautiful warmer red color that you can see me adding right now is Winter Newton Red Deep. This color has the chroma of the Cadmium Red, but it's transparent. And that is beautiful to go over your textures that you lay down in the first layer as you could see I was not blending my first layer too much I wanted to leave a little bit of the texture because as the onion skin dries up it creates sort of the edges throughout the skin so you can see the light reflecting differently and for the highlight on this onion I wanted to add a little bit more lightness to it so I also added a little bit more of the Quinacridone magenta mixed with the titanium white so it has a little bit more of the pinky tone to it and again I'm just dragging the brush trying to create a texture rather than just the highlight working on the shape of the highlight so I'm just working in terms of the texture how it looks on the onion and how can I work with descriptive brush strokes the brush strokes that really tell about the area where you apply the paint to and working on these cute little tails again um, I was kind of going back and forth between playing around with the lightness and the darkness on them to make sure that again they're not taking away the attention so um, for this composition I was working from the picture that I took myself and for that picture I basically used only one light source which was a diffused light from the window so it's a cooler light 
but I still wanted to add a little bit of the warmer highlights on these dried up tails so that not all of my highlights are in a cooler range. And um, I saved probably one of the challenging parts for the last. This is the cut onion. It was um, kind of hard to create the lines in there. So you see, I'm kind of procrastinating a little bit. I'm going back to those tails and fidgeting with them just a little bit. Um, this just basically means that I'm trying to fight my nerves when um, I have to start working on the layers on the cut onion. So this really nice liner that I'm using is a Princeton brush liner size 2 and I really like these elongated bristles that it has because it helps me to create a more natural texture when the brush itself adds a little bit of the movement to, um, to your hand so the line looks a little bit more natural it's not as um, unified so you have a little bit of the texture in there depending how much pressure you apply but even with the even pressure you still have a little bit of the paint texture underneath of what you're painting on and that also adds a little bit of the variation so you have these lines that are sort of appearing and disappearing and that adds to kind of to the interest in, um, in this composition so at this point i'm using all of the mixes that i've had on my palette i'm not adding any more colors because as you can only see in the description i still used quite a lot oh another beautiful color that i forgot to mention is a lizard crimson it is also a very beautiful transparent color and i know it's not permanent and the one that I use is by Sennelier and it's called Permanent Elysian Crimson. It has a little bit of a different tone. It doesn't have the depth to it that I like to see in Elysian Crimson. But I would rather have the safety of knowing that my colors are going to last longer and not fade in the nearest future. So here I'm first developing this pattern with the lines um, of the cut layers and I'm already enjoying the variety of texture that I created on the first layer and now this texture is showing through and it helps me to create different thickness on these um, cut circles and as you saw I was even blending a little bit with my finger just to make sure that I have some natural textures in there so it doesn't look um, as a painted and looks more realistic rather and now i'm just going back and adding a little bit more of my warm white grayish mix um, there was again the Port portland warm gray a little bit of the paint gray and some of my purple matter and knockered and magenta to add a little bit of the opacity to the thicker layers on the onions and that again just adds to the beautiful texture and the beautiful variations of colors here um, for the majority of this painting as you can see i'm using just one or two brushes and these are my uh, rosemary and co let me just double check oh these are eclipse long filbert size 2 and size 4 and i don't really change my brushes too much throughout the painting i just wipe them off with the paper towel and i go back i don't really mind having a little bit of the mix um, from the colors that i used before mixed into the colors that i'm adding to the composition i feel it just like unifies your entire palette so I've probably used the same two brushes for this whole painting except for the liner that I used on the lines on the onion and I'm just going to use a thicker brush for 
fixing up the edges of the onions but other than that I think um, that a few brushes is more than enough I know a lot of artists who prefer to use pretty much different brush for different color or at least different brushes for the highlights or the shadows but I don't even clean my brushes in turpentine while I'm working I just wipe them off with paper towel and if I have some stubborn colors stuck in the bristles I might just rub them a little bit into the Galkit gel that I'm using as my medium it just loosens up a little bit and then I wipe it off and I can paint again but I also try to control how much medium I'm adding so that I can feel the flow of the paint and feel that it's consistent and when you're cleaning your brush too much throughout the painting it might start getting into the paint and make it feel like your paint is a little runny but again this is just a per uh, personal preference and if you like to clean your brushes go ahead and do that so at this point i'm just cleaning up the edges of the onions and also i'm going o going over with um, some black oil paint mixed with the paints gray because um, oil paint combined with the medium adds a little bit more depth and richness to the black color acrylic dried up pretty matte and flat of course you can fix that once you varnish but I wanted to work a little bit with the edges of the onions and make them look as if they're disappearing into the shadow as if they're just fat fading with just a little bit on the indication on the edges of the onions and leaving the rest to your imagination and for your eyes to finish the job of trying to guess the shape of um, the onions and this is pretty much it for this painting i'm just adding a little bit more um, on the edges i'm also going to be adding just a little bit more of the mid-tone in there to show how the colors reflect from the other onions and just to indicate as if there was something maybe behind them um, reflecting the light back even though when I took this original photo the still life I had uh, foam boards blocking the light on the back and on the left so I only had light coming from the window and here is the finished painting you can see it up close with all of the beautiful textures from the bristles I really enjoyed working on this one the original has now sold, but I still have prints available in my shop. I'm going to leave them in the link in the description. And I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this format. And leave me in the comments what would you want me to paint next. What are you looking forward to and what are your interests in oil still lifes or maybe other subjects like landscapes or animals and I will be happy to hear your feedback. Thank you for watching. Bye.